Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Geek channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a Debezium connector for Postgres database. If you aspire to be a data engineer, you should actually know about all these technologies. In this video, we will see how data engineering teams capture any data change events and how data is published to Kafka topics, etc. This session is going to be really exciting because whatever we have learned so far in this Kafka tutorial, we are going to use all that in this session. So please do watch till the end. So uh, for today's session, we need Kafka and Zookeeper and CalfDrop and Postgres uh, database. And we will create uh, one more uh, container for the BZM connector. And we would need either PZ admin or dbweaver to connect uh, to uh, Postgres database. You can install that in your laptop or your system. We will also need Postman because we need to register our uh, Debezium connector with the Kafka. So if you are already following this tutorial since the beginning, you would uh, know that uh, we have already created containers using Docker Compose file. So I'm going to copy that from this Docker Compose file. I'll copy the Zookeeper, Kafka, and then CapDrop. I'll just paste it here. Okay. Our last container is Debezium Connector. So I'm using um, Debezium Connect 1.9 for Debezium Connector. And uh, I'm giving, I, I will be running it on port 8083. Um, these are some environment variables uh, which you can pass. So config storage topic, uh, offset storage topic, status storage topic. So uh, these are some topics uh, when we register uh, this Debezium connector in our Kafka. Uh, these topics will be created where all the information related to published and messages will be stored. Okay, then next is bootstrap servers. These are our Kafka nodes. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, then I'm just saying that uh, start this Kafka connect after uh, Kaf Kafka, Zookeeper, and Postgres are up. Let's go ahead and run this uh, Docker Compose file. We will wait for some time for all the containers to be up and running. And once our Debezium connector is uh, up, we will um, we'll register it using this um, this post aid. Before registering the Debezium connector, let's understand what is actually a Debezium connector. Let's open the official documentation of Debezium connector. So what does a Debezium connector do is, the first time it connects to Postgres, SQL or cluster, the connector takes the consistent snapshots of all schemas. After that snapshot is complete the connector continuously captures row level changes that insert update delete database content and that were committed to a postgres database the connector generates data change event records and it streams them to kafka topics for each table the default behavior is that connector streams all generated events to separate Kafka topics for that table. Applications and services consume data change event record from that topic. Okay. So if you want to understand in detail about uh, this Debezium connector, you can go through this uh, official documentation. I have provided the link in the uh, description. Now, um, Let's go ahead and understand how we can uh, register our uh, Debezium connector. So for that, we need to open Postman. Let's quickly verify uh, our calf drop. So our calf drop is running. Our Debezium uh, connector is running on 8083. To register our uh, Debezium connector, we need to uh, 
hit this post API. Let's see what, what we need to send in the payload. So since the name of our uh, schema in the database was inventory, so I have given the name as uh, inventory connector. And then uh, what is the type of this connector? So since we this is a Postgres uh, database which to which we are connecting, so I'm passing that class. And the rest all are the database uh, details. What is the host name? Um, port. So just notice here that this is the port which is inside uh, the Docker Compose, not, not the external one. The external one is 5433. In the table.include.list, I am giving uh, the customer's table. So any changes, insert, update, delete, in this customer's table will be published to the Kafka topic. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit this API. Okay, so it says that uh, our uh, DBZM connector is uh, successfully registered. Now let's go ahead and check in CAF. You, if you refresh, you should be able to see, uh, yeah, different uh, topics automatically created. Uh, we are interested into this topic uh, because uh, this is where any uh, da uh, data change uh, event will be captured. So let's go inside this and see what is there. Okay, so we see that th there are some uh, initial messages. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll go to our uh, database and then we will make some changes to the data. What I will do, I'll make some update to this customer's table and we'll see if uh, that change is published to this topic or not. So let me open the SQL editor. We have uh, four records. Now I'll uh, create one update statement Yeah, here. Now let's refresh our Kafka topic. Yeah, so you can see one uh, new message has been published. If you if you look at the payload, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, you should be able to see uh, the payload. So bef it says that before uh, the first name was Sally, last name Thomas, email this. And after is first name is Cloud Geek and last name is same, email is same. And uh, you can see what is the transaction ID, schema, table name, database, um, LSN, all those values you can see here. So pretty interesting, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, do one insert command. Okay, now let's refresh it again. Okay, we have received uh, the next uh, message on our topic. And if you look at the payload, uh, you will see it, it It says that before is null. It means uh, you can understand that this is an insert command. Now, if you want to know how many characters are already registered, you can just change this to get call and you will get the list of uh, connectors. Now, if you want to see more details about that uh, connector, you can just do this get call and you will see all the information regarding that connector. All right, that's all for this session. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hope you learned something new today. And uh, do try it out in your local system. And if you have any doubts or if you get any errors, do let me know in comments. And if you uh, like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. This will really motivate me to keep on creating uh, new videos and new content. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.